Well, Deborah Beck is joining us here in the studio, and this uh, is actually going on from uh, what we did with the Rainer Huff and the beautiful stamps, which we went down to the museum, uh, down at uh, the airport, and did uh, an item. And and his work that really came to light, the first time I even knew about it, that in Australia, this big memorial to, to the war, uh, that he designed that. But you've written a book about him, and you're here on the Isle of Man to do a lecture. So over to you, and we will, by the way, let me just show these stamps, which, which, which time beautifully from Maxine Cannon's uh, collection here. Um, about him, what, what made him do what he did and uh, his Manx connection? Should we start there? Yes, well he was born here in 1894 and uh, he, um, he lived for the first eight years of his life here. Uh, so he actually grew up long enough to learn uh, a bit about the history of the island, as the stories. His mother, mother was a Manx woman who was born in Cronkbourne village and, uh, and she, she was very uh, keen on telling him all the stories of the island and his siblings as well. And uh, So they stayed with him for the rest of his life and he often did uh, images related to, to his childhood in his work. In his later work. And was he a, a sculptor more than anything? That was he his was thing? a sculptor yeah. and he did some beautiful drawings as well and watercolours but mostly sculpture. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when did he go off to Australia? But he was quite young then was he? No, he was 29 when he went so he, um, he went to, uh, uh, after the Dumbbells Bank crashed here, the, uh, his father was a stonemason who was working, and bricklayer, he was working on the buildings here in Douglas uh, and then he actually moved the family to England because he, he lost his work here uh, and that was about 1902 and uh, they went to Lanacost and he was working there then to um, Nottingham and uh, and Rainer did his school most of his schooling there and started art school there and trained as a stonemason with his father working on Wollaton Hall so um, they, they that was where he first got his start uh, and Nottingham School of Art he spent six years there before he went to the First World War and he served in the British Army for three and a half years then uh, when he came back he went, he got a scholarship to go to the Royal College of Art in London because he's very, really talented, wonderful drawer and, um, and he was in the same class as Henry Moore and Barbara Hetworth and uh, ended up uh, got, being the star pupil there actually at the Royal College and won the Rome Scholarship which was very rare and, and off, went off to Rome. Um, by then he was married and had a child and uh, when he was actually in Rome, he was offered a position teaching and running the sculpture department at East Sydney Technical College in Sydney, Australia. So this is 1923. It was it's quite move. something. Yeah. yeah, that's a long way to go, isn't it? And he also had to resign his scholarship to do it, which was three years, and he only done three months. So it was a big decision for him. And uh, anyway, off he went. And they they uh, got got the ship and uh, the old Ballarat and and went to um, to Sydney. And he. That, but was then he became famous. So he mm. it was the, his time in Sydney was was the uh, the time he became a well known sculptor, and got commissions for large buildings, particularly the Anzac War Memorial that you uh, mentioned. Yeah. yeah, I mean, beautiful. Mm. I mean, if anyone's mm. got a chance, to Google this and have a look at it in detail. Mm. Um, stunning. Particularly the sculpture in the centre called Sacrifice, which is uh, of a naked soldier being held aloft by his um, by three women. So it was Hoff's sort of recognition of the role of women in the war, um, holding up the dead the dead son um, and husband of the of the people uh, that were holding him up. And uh, yeah, it was it's a very moving sculpture, and most people love it when they see it. Now you've written about him. What made you? Yeah, what, what attachment have you got to him? Um, my link with him was that um, I teach at the National Art School, which he really founded. So when he went to East Sydney Tech uh, Technical College, he became sculpture and drawing master. But he was it was only it was 1923. It was you know really early days of the, of the college, and it was only. Uh, it had only been going for a year at, on the site of the old Darlinghurst Jail. Um, and he decided that they should make the art department a uh, really a big, big one, called it, and suggested calling it the National Art School. Uh, so it became a national sort of institute. And, um, and then he set it up based on the Royal College of Art in London with a five-year diploma, which it had never had, and, uh, and in introduced you know, anatomy classes and you know, a, lot of, a lot of the basic classes that he'd, he'd had at uh, the Royal College. And, uh, and he set up the first school of sculpture in Australia and it became basically the training ground for the, all the sculptors from the 30s into the 40s, 50s. So it was, a, it was really important to our cultural history. And you're on the other man because on Wednesday you're doing a lecture. Yes, I am. About mm. his life, about everything? Yes, it is about his life. It's about his, uh, 
his links to the Isle of Man, of course. Uh, and his, yeah, his, that, that pricey I just gave you will be expanded. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yeah, so can yeah. people get tickets? Is it open to the public? Yes, it's open is to it? the public. It's at the Manx Museum mm -hmm. and it's uh, £10 to get in and it's at 7 o'clock tomorrow night, Wednesday night. Well, and, and really, it's been fascinating to, to, to almost lift the lid on this gentleman who, who hasn't mm. really had his full potential mm. recognised. Would you yes. agree? I agree. And, and in fact, I came here six years ago to do the early research on his life and uh, it was here that I found out quite a lot about the fact that he had lived here for eight years to start with. I, it was Everybody thought it was one year, but it was eight, which was quite significant. And also looking at maps uh, in the Manx Museum, in the archives, looking to find out where he had lived and, and uh, the places um, where, where he was born, in fact, uh, where his parents are buried and uh, you know his yeah. grandparents are buried and and his younger sister who died here um, where she's buried that that sort of thing was was amazing to find in the in the archives uh, which led me to then go on and find out whether he'd studied here or whatever as, as a child right mm. well and we'll, we'll finish we started we got these uh, stamps especially it must be quite chopping you saw these right well, you know I was thrilled these, that these the stamps uh, have evolved out of this out of my book well, uh, yeah. which is really great oh, it's from your <laughs> yeah so oh, um, yeah so they are really um, very I'm very happy with them, and uh, the same designer, the Australian designer who designed my book, designed the stamps. So uh, the, um, the the links between Australia and, and uh, the Isle of Man are really close, actually.